Hi, my name is Daisy DeCosta, and I'm the director of the O'Toole Library at St. Peter's University. This video is designed for faculty at St. Peter's University to learn more about SAGE Research Methods. SAGE Research Methods is a subscribed library database dedicated to teaching and understanding research methods. SAGE Research Methods supports research at all levels and provides materials to guide users through every step of the research process. And you can access SAGE Research Methods through this URL, otoollibrary.stpeters.edu slash SRM. And St. Peter's students, faculty, and staff can access the platform from anywhere uh, through this URL. SAGE Research Methods is unique in among library databases in the variety of content it provides access to, which can, includes books, cases, data sets, videos, and research methods tools. Uh, the content in SRM is created by researchers, largely by faculty actually practicing these research methods in a broad variety of disciplines. So we can feel pretty confident that um, in particular, the case studies in SAGE research methods and the books do go through a peer reviewed process um, and that the content is general in general is checked for quality by experts in, in each field. SAGE research methods can be used by students by faculty, by experienced researchers conducting their own projects, or by librarians like myself who provide research support or workshops to students. Insofar as faculty use, we're really hoping that SAGE research methods can, in some cases, replace instructional materials that um, maybe even publisher provided um, instructional materials that students would have to buy for the class, such as textbooks. It can also just help engage students more in the research process and um, have high quality learning materials, whether they be data sets, videos, books, or case studies to uh, succeed in their research studies. So now I'm gonna go through the diff these different content types that I keep mentioning in SAGE research methods and discuss what they're all about and some potentials for, for using in course instruction. And the four main content types in the database are books and reference, videos, cases, and data sets. Within each of these different content types, State SAGE research methods has some buttons, some function buttons that will help you utilize the resources. Um, everything has a downloadable PDF. Even the videos have a fully um, accessible and captioned uh, PDF transcript that you can download. Uh, similarly, the case studies, the data sets, the books um, can all be downloaded by PDFs or the chapters can be downloaded as PDFs. There's a citation tool in case you want to cite any content in SAGE research methods, and you can choose from a range of formats and citation styles and export to reference managers like Zotero. There is a button that lets you easily share the resource via email or social media. On any SAGE research methods text resource, you can adjust the text size between three settings just by clicking the text size button, which is a nice accessibility feature. The embed code is really useful if you want to get this content into your Blackboard shells to get students watching these videos, looking at these books. Um, you can just use that embed code to copy and paste. If you don't want to embed the content in Blackboard, but you'd prefer the student to link out to it, um, there is this little um, chain link icon button, which lets you uh, create a stable link back to that resource so students can access it from off campus and they'll get the, the correct St. Peter's login. So let's talk a little more about books. Um, these books are terrific. There's about 1100 currently in our collection. 
Um, and they are full text, sage published digital versions of these books. Um, there are handbooks, which um, provide comprehensive coverage of specific subjects, handbook of qualitative research in criminal justice. You know, there, there's um, different kinds of disciplines. Um, I'm gonna be stressing this a lot, but SAGE provides a lot of different resources. It's especially strong in the social sciences, um, including business and education in there. The Little Blue Books um, are specific reference resources for qualitative research methods. The Little Green Books um, provide the same in-depth guides on quantitative research methods. And um, there's also what in the library biz we call reference books. So. Um, dictionaries and encyclopedias that provide definitions. This fall, we were able to add um, a module of SAGE research methods video. Um, this, we did not have this in our first year of subscribing with SAGE and it was uh, requested by faculty members. And these are a variety of types of videos that can be embedded in your Blackboard shells or that can be shown within your class time um, to stimulate discussion, to provide alternative viewpoints, to enhance understanding of topics. And these videos come in a range of formats. There's actual licensed documentary films on research. Um, there are a lot of case studies where researchers explain how they did their research, the, the methods they chose and why they chose them. There are interviews with key academics in the field offering their experiences and observations. Um, there are tutorials which really provide teaching and understanding and an overview of a, a, what would be a course topic. and much, much more interviews, conferences, et cetera. So the videos um, are not just one thing, but they are all videos related to supporting research methods. Case studies. So we have uh, one St. Peter's University faculty member who's published already at least two case studies with uh, SAGE research methods. So it's, it's also an area where you can publish. But the case studies are really designed um, more for students to, to kind of peer into the, the researcher's process. So oftentimes these case studies uh, incorporate research that's been published separately as a journal article, um, but these give um, the researcher a chance to more reflect on the process, why they chose their research methods, how they overcame challenges, what went well, and what they might have done differently. And they're all peer reviewed. Um, we have just started out here with cases part one. Um, we hope to expand to some of the other modules in subsequent years, but um, there are um, hundreds of case studies for, for to share with your students in our current SRM platform. Data sets. Now here, um, we really need to make a distinction um, with what's going on with the data sets in SAGE research methods. They are not really data sets. We have another database um, that um, we subscribe to, Statista, that provides sort of raw data sets for research. SAGE research methods data sets is a collection of topical practice data sets, um, which were curated cleaned up and presented with instructional guides to support the teaching and learning of quantitative and qualitative data analysis techniques. So these are not really data sets that faculty members would utilize to do their own unique research. They've probably been well utilized already. Um, they're, they're really designed for classroom teaching and lab assignments. Students could potentially, or faculty, um, utilize them on their own for independent learning if you wanna learn more about analytical methods um, or for a refresher on data analysis techniques. And um, we'll give you a little preview into them when we go into the database, but they're provided in a variety of formats, um, not just Microsoft Excel, a, a variety of software. Some of them are designed to do in SPSS, some of them are designed to do with R, some of them are designed to do with Excel. So um, they're, they're great and they're designed for teaching. So in addition to those four content types, 
SAGE research methods provides us with two tools that uh, students can be referred to or faculty members can use in um, you know, learning and performing research. And the first one, um, and these uh, research tools are accessible from anywhere on the SAGE Research Methods platform. You'll see a link on the very top from wherever you are that just says tools. So that's where, where they are sort of embedded. Um, and also if you scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, you'll see a lot of the other content type we've talked about up at the top of the homepage. But if you scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, you will see uh, both the methods map and the project planner uh, right linked there for you to access. So what are these uh, research tools? Well, the first one is called methods map and it's a visualization tool to help you or your students understand the relationship between different research methods concepts. So you can here search any type of research methods concept or uh, statistical method. And it will give you a visualization of how that might relate to other terms. Um, it, you can click through on any of these broader, narrower, or related terms to explore those concepts more fully. Um, you can also save your search history and return to previously searched terms. So it's really um, sort of a, a, a visualization tool related to research methods. Project Planner is a little more of a linear type tool to actually walk a researcher through the logical stages of a research pro project. This will help researchers in both their planning and their organization. So um, you can dip in and out of topics. You know, if a researcher encountered this and they were already to the point of doing their literature review, you could just click on that section of the Project Planner. Um, and it basically uses questions to probe the researcher to help you find the answers you need related to the stage of your project you're using, and also to help you locate relevant research methods to carry out that stage of the project. So uh, I think Project Planner could be a very useful tool, especially to some of our students doing more extensive research projects, such as in those research intensive classes, the honors thesis and, and doctoral dissertations for sure. So next, I'm gonna take you in and give you a little preview uh, if you haven't seen Sage Research Methods. And once again, if you wanna access this tool on your own, it's always available to you at otoolibrary.stpeters.edu slash SRM. So when you go to that URL, you will be taken to methods.sagepub.com. You do not, however, want to uh, start at this URL because if you are outside of the campus IP, or IP range, it will not um, know that you're a St. Peter's faculty member and it won't give you the proper Google authentication so you can access our subscribed resource. So just be aware, even though we'll, we will end up on methods.sagepubs.com, you want to start at, at the URL, otoolibrary.stpeers.edu slash SRM. And uh, there's so many ways that you can access the content in here. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the, the, you know, the four different content types. But just be aware if you if you want to just browse, if you're new to the tool and you want to look at um, things that are made for your subject area, when you click browse by, you will get um, the option to browse by different subject areas. So you can look up content related to And, and um, this might be a good idea just to get familiar. I'm going to click on education just to get familiar with the types of content that Sage Research Methods has in your subject area. It will start giving you a, a brief bio of that discipline. Um, and, you know, most of you know kind of. The range, it's going to pull up case studies books and reference, 
videos. And this, this just lets you sort of see a variety of content that might come up. Another thing you can do once you're in your discipline is you can easily filter. These filters are available throughout the database. So if you just want to see, for instance, books that um, are related to research methods in the field of education, and you can do this for any field, let's say you're building a course and you're looking for textbooks, you can um, sort that way. And some of the books will be interdisciplinary. For instance, we're gonna see qualitative data collection that really um, you know, speaks to a lot of different disciplines. So you'll, you'll see a variety of things. Um, and general books on different types of publications. Here's a book on your evaluation dissertation book on using focus groups. So you could, that's one way to browse content is to look by your discipline. Um, another thing that's available on SAGE is a keyword search. Um, and, and this is how a lot of people just dig in, especially if you know the area of research methods or something that you're trying to teach. Um, I'm going to put in chi-square test because I remember when I took statistics in um, the MBA program here at St. Peter's, this is one statistical um, test that we had to use SPSS for and um, we had to perform in the class. So if you were gonna teach your students about chi-square, maybe you could check out some of these videos um, this is a video that comes from a series related to SPSS. Um, here's a longer 12 minute video that's more of, um, looks like a researcher talking about chi-square and they talk about um, some of the other topics discussed in this video. Some of the other, there's a different researcher with a three minute video that talks about p-value categorical variables and chi-square. Um, so there's quite a few videos popping up. Then we get to a data set um, and you can, we can uh, see a data set and what this entails. So this would be for someone who wanted to teach how to prepare um, to clean and prepare for a chi-square test of independence in SPSS. Um, and they provide a data set for you. This looks like it's in the area of criminology and criminal justice. Um, they are using a crime survey of England and Wales for their teaching data set. Um, and the data set itself, um, you will see is downloaded, can be downloaded in this um, example in a CSV file or a .sav file specifically for SPSS. Um, and there's also a code book available. And then you get the teaching and learning material. So this will give you a guide. Um, part of it's designed for you, how to teach using this data set. Um, it also includes the code book, which is sort of a key to the data set. Um, it includes a student facing guide. And all of this, you will see all these little tools. You always have the embed tool for Blackboard. You always have the download button and the share button. So those tools I spoke about are pretty much available in all of these different um, resources, including the data set. And then you get the how-to guide. So um, yeah, it's really, really designed for teaching. Um, and everything is hyperlinked in SAGE. So if you wanted to find more things on this specific research method, you can click that. Um, say you wanna learn about Fisher's exact test, you can click there. It's really um, simple to navigate and, and look at. Um, you can also see there are other chi-square tests in SPSS uh, data sets. That's a popular one from all different types of surveys. So you could even look for different topical information. So that is one way, if you know what you're looking for, doing a keyword search can, um, can bring you there and you can you do a keyword search from anywhere. Um, you'll also see some books and reference coming up, some different chapters. 
learning statistics using R. So if you want to, um, you know, have your students using a different tool like R, um, you can uh, find search results for that. And this happens to be a book chapter. And you, you can, um, once again, link to this chapter in Blackboard, embed it in Blackboard, change the text size. We can always go bigger or smaller. Um, there is the option to add things to a reading list. If you want to create a, a sign-in for Sage Research Methods, you'll see that option on the upper right. Um, that's a great tool for kind of, if you if you want to save stuff, um, feel free to create a login. The login has nothing to, to Sage, has nothing to do with off-campus access. We offer off-campus access through Google authentication. So it's totally optional. You can use the database and access all the content without making a login. But if you want to save things, create reading lists for your students, um, it might be beneficial to create a login. Explore um, some of these other content types we've discussed today. So you might wanna just look at case studies because um, you really wanna give your students sort of a insight into case studies. Um, and you can get really specific here. Um, I'm gonna type in social media because I always have research students in a communication research intensive class that are looking at social media. Um, so say, um, you know, you want an example of a researcher who's um, using social media in their research study. You could just keyword search within case studies to find that. And um, these are nice because they, they really give you the author's perspective, sometimes multiple researchers' perspectives. And these also, you know, very easy to give your students access either by embedding it in Blackboard, sharing the link with them, um, or however you, you want to do it. And all of the key studies come with learning outcomes. I forgot to mention this. They're not only peer reviewed, um, but they're designed for education. So um, as you're thinking about learning incomes, outcomes for your class, some, some faculty have learning outcomes for for every week. And this really can help you with that because you know exactly what students should be able to do after reading the case study. In this case, understand the nature of sampling big data, as well as uh, a couple other. Understand how social media data can be used to conduct social science. Um, and we can always make the text bigger as well in SAGE. that's a little glimpse into the case studies. And as you, as you go to the bottom, you can explore all of the, the areas this way. Books and reference, I am hoping that faculty can consider, um, and I'm gonna go to browse all books and reference. I'm hoping that faculty can consider using some of these books as course text, because we do have free access for our students um, and they can have it day one in their Blackboard shell, you just embed it. So there's just a variety of content in here, books on statistics, books on using assessment data, books on analyzing textual information, which is, um, you know, maybe um, something that even humanities or, or literature scholars want to do. And um, pretty much any type of research methods, um, you will find some type of, of text to support students in. So I don't know if it works for every discipline. Once again, a SAGE is a little stronger in the social sciences, although they're building and building for um, natural sciences and health science. Um, but I'm hoping this can be a useful tool to fa for faculty. Please help me spread the word if you've made it this far in this video. And um, please do explore SAGE research methods. It, um, and give us any feedback that you have. We, we are considering expanding next year. We've had some wonderful federal grant funding from Title V that we were able to leverage to add the video collection. 
So um, I thank everyone who was um, able to watch this video and um, please reach out. And if you need any help, um, you can reach me via email or always email the library at reference at stpeters.edu. Thanks for listening.